Then look at what he says. He said, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Now, who is saying this? Okay, well, the Lord is saying it. Notice, in the New World Translation, they say well, the King James is wrong because it uses the word L-O-R-D with small letters except for the capital L. It says here, Look, He is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see Him, and those who pierced Him, and all the tribes of the earth will beat themselves in grief because of Him. Yes, Amen. And then He says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, says Jehovah God, the One who is and who was and who is coming, the Almighty. So I asked this young girl, here's the deal. Who are they speaking about right here? Who's coming? The One who was pierced, and that was Jesus Christ, right? I said, now, in verse number 8, it says, I am the Alpha and Omega, says Jehovah God. I said, now who's talking right here? She said, well, that's Jehovah God. I said, okay. So you, you believe that Jehovah God. I mean, it says it right there in your Bible. I said, let's go over here and look at verse number 17 and look at what it says. In verse 17, and when I saw Him, this is John speaking, when I saw Him, Jesus Christ, I fell dead at His feet and He laid His right hand upon me saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, amen, and have the keys of hell and of death. Now, he said in verse number 7 that everybody's going to wail because of it. Well, in verse 8, it's no doubt that Jehovah God is saying it. When you go here, it says, And when I saw him, I fell dead at his feet. And he laid his right hand upon me and said, Do not fear, do not be fearful. I am the first and the last. Now, if you take this, he said, I'm the first and the last. How do you say first and last in Hebrew? Alpha and Omega. Verse 8, he says, I am the Alpha and the Omega. Now, you go to this verse. Now, who's speaking here? Who is speaking to John? Jehovah's speaking to John in the whole context of this. And then, when you look at it, he said, I am the first and the last. So he's still speaking to John. John's not the first and the last. Then he said, in verse 18, And the living one, and I became dead. I said, now who's speaking? And she said, well, Jehovah God. I said, wait, Jehovah died? And she said, oh, oh, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me see that. Let me look, let me look. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, look. I said, here's what it is right here. Jehovah is speaking to John. There's nobody else in this conversation. Leave it in the context. Who is speaking to John? I said, it's Jehovah. Well, he said, I am the first and the last because he said, I'm the Alpha and the Omega. And it's the Lord God, Jehovah, that's speaking. And he said, I'm the living one and became dead. So Jehovah died. According to your Bible, but y'all don't believe that. I said, why doesn't your religion preach the Bible? That's why they want you to read that book and not this book. Or not this book. Then it says, But look, I am living forever and ever, and I have the keys of death and of Hades. And so who has those keys? Jesus has the keys. And so, you know, that's where I told her, I said, I'm going to prove to you that Jesus is God. And of course, you could go to John and, and show them in John 4, 24, and show them that God is a spirit. It says it in their book, in their Bible. And uh, now go with me to Revelation 4. And just two more verses and I'm going to be done. Revelation 4 and uh, look at verse number 8. This is speaking about the four beasts. They had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, 
And they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was, which is, and which is to come. Well, look at what happens. And as for the four living creatures, each one of them represents respectively has six wings round about and underneath they are full of eyes and they have no rest day and night as they say holy 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 is Jehovah God the Almighty who was who is and who is coming well we read a while ago that somebody's coming in chapter 1 who's coming He's coming in the clouds. The Bible said He's the one that they pierced. So who's coming? Jehovah, whom they pierced. They don't like that. Well, chapter 11 and verse number 17. What it says, eleven seventeen, saying, "We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and was and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned." Now, who reigns? The reign is a king, and he's going to be a king, and he is king, and his name is Jesus. Now, watch this. In the New World Translation, saying, "We thank you, Jehovah God, the Almighty, the One who is and who was." Because you have taken your great power and begun ruling as king. So he's calling Jehovah the king. The Bible teaches that Jesus is the king. Now I want you to look at one other thing that I didn't write down, but I'm going to show you this. Now here's the thing that Jehovah's Witnesses believe. And I've told you this before. There are people out there, and I'm just going to use this. You can read it out your own Bible. I want you to follow me with it. In Revelation chapter number uh, 2 and chapter number 3, we're going to read one verse in each chapter. I'm going to show you this. I've told you this before. Y'all are going to remember me telling you this. That anybody that believes when they become a believer, regardless if it's a Jehovah's Witness, a Mormon, a Pentecostal, or I don't care who it is, that they become a Jew, a spiritual Jew, Right? We've heard that. I've heard Jehovah's Witness. Now, they may have changed their doctrine since then, but I want you to see this. What does the Bible say about people that call themselves Jews? Look at what he said in Revelation 2. Look at verse number 9. I know your tribulation and poverty, but you are rich. And the blasphemy by those who say they themselves are Jews. And yet they are not, but are a synagogue of sin. In chapter number 3, look at verse 9. Look, I will give those from the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews, and yet they are not, but are lying. Look, I will make them come and do obeisance before your feet and make them know I have loved them. You say, well, Brother Brown, what does that prove? Well, Here's the thing, anybody that considers themselves a Jew it, that, that is not born of a Jewish descent, the Bible says, is a liar. And I believe that it, it, regardless of if you consider it a physical or spiritual thing, uh, the Bible says that they're a liar. And so those are just a few things that you can find. And here's the thing, if, if a Jehovah's Witness comes to your door, or anybody comes to your door, you want to be able to give them an answer for the reason of the, thing, of the hope that's within you. You don't want to just tell them, ah, I ain't got time to talk to you, go away. Or I don't believe what you believe, I believe different. Well, that's not helping them out at all. But if you can get them to walk away like that young girl did yesterday and say, I've got some research to do. I feel like I've done everything I could for her up to that point. Now it's up to the Word of God and the Spirit of God to deal with the heart. You know, here's the thing. We say we know we have the truth. Well, we ought to have that confidence. 
yeah. and not be afraid when anybody comes to the door and just say and, and say, okay, look, explain this to me. That's all you got to do. They explain it. You know what you believe about it. You say, explain it to me. In other words, it, you think, well, ladies, you think about the, 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 your favorite meal that you can fix that nobody can fix it like you. And somebody comes knock on your door and say, hey, I'm going to tell you the best way to make this stuff. I'm going to tell you the best way to cook this. And you listen to them for a little while and you're like, nah, you're leaving out some of the best ingredients. Oh, I didn't know. I know how to do it. Yeah, but I know how to do this too, and I know how to make it better than you do. I know the truth about it. I know what works and what don't work. In it. So, in the same sense, we should know about our beliefs, about our religion, about what we teach and what we practice. So that when they do come, if anything, make them walk away with a question mark about what they believe. Because if they don't agree, if they don't agree with the scriptures. They're wrong. Period. And if we don't agree with the Scriptures, we're wrong. And if they don't agree with the Scriptures and we just tell them, bye, and see you later, have a good day, then we're wrong because the Bible says not to do that. And we should at least try to get them done. 